Kenny Jenner Chin. Today, my topic is Mencius. He was born 180 years after Confucius. He was considered the second sage, and like Confucius, he advised kings. And he had two innovations. He made explicit what was implicit in Confucius' ideas. Two of these ideas are that all men are born with an innate root of goodness. Second, from this goodness, we could fashion a benevolent government for the people. He believed that the benevolent government was based upon the democratic principle from the mandate of heaven as reflected in the people. In today's contentious presidential election between Biden and Trump, I was wondering what would Mencius advise? What would he counsel, how would he counsel Biden or Trump to develop a new form of government? What would be his analysis of the main problems, especially given our left-right impasse? So let's begin with that. I believe Mencius would be astounded by our American representative democracy. The fact that we have a liberal democracy that is elected by the people, of the people, and for the people. This is very positive. But this is the form. What about the substance? This is where I think Mencius would find it alarming that somehow the substance of the government policies have been tampered in some way or it's been watered down in some way. Why is it that the people, the democratic principle, is not reflected in many of the policies? For example, some 70%, according to Pose, feel that America is headed in the, in the wrong direction. Americans are restless. There's a middle-class disenchantment. Hard work is not paying off. And you have the left-right gridlock, as I mentioned. This gridlock has led to problems with gun control legislation being sidetracked. Election reform seems never to work. And there's still the health care dilemma. We have an inept government, it seems. Racial problems still simmer after 60 years of civil rights. There's growing income inequality and corporate bigness. It's become such that people believe government itself is the problem, that it's rigged, bureaucratic, impersonal. The negative views abound. Some even go so far as to think that government itself is the enemy. So what would Mencius do? He would, he would want to rectify government. He wants to make what? A benevolent government for the people. But in America, who are the people? We have such a plurality. We, we have corporations, consumers, ethnic and racial identities, immigrants, professionals, workers, and laborers, rich and poor. These are all difficult to reconcile, especially given our adversarial model of competing interests, stoking passions leading to conflicts. Even when you have compromise, even when you have policy, it is deemed it's deemed unfair. So there's preponderant special interest, corporate money lobbyist, and the military industrial complex seems to appropriate much more of the resources. Representatives become captive of special interests. Government somehow is compromised. So how would Mencius define a benevolent government. It would be a moral entity that takes into consideration the freedom and interests of all the people. Now, American individual freedom is the envy of the world. It's enshrined in the Constitution. All of us, we have an inalienable right of life. We have an inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But Confucius and Mencius would ask, what about the pursuit of goodness? What good is freedom without goodness? Goodness 
must go with happiness. So our Constitution offers half a loaf rather than the whole loaf of bread. And according to Mencius, goodness is possible because we are all born with this innate root of goodness. And he says, witness this. When any of us, even strangers, see a child about to fall into a well, we will all invariably rush to save it. And this is unthinkingly. This is almost reflexive. We don't think about what rewards we might get or what acc accolades. The goodness is innate in our nature. You can imagine yourself doing the same. But this innate goodness is just a root. It needs cultivation. Without nurturing, humans can easily lose this goodness. So Confucius believed that not knowing the way to goodness is a shame indeed. After all, humans are not that far removed when they are born from animals. So to Confucius, he wanted to provide teachings that would show us how to become a polished vessel rather than live the life of a bitter gourd. Early education on how to be a good person is essential. It needs to be instituted in a curriculum early, focusing on character development. There is a way to learn ethically, to learn to, vi to live a virtuous life, to have a philosophy of life. School reform to incorporate teachings of the moral way for all its citizens is a first precondition for the Chinese way. And Confucius proposed five virtues that I will briefly outline. Ren, Yi, Li, Chi, and Xin. Ren, or humanity and benevolence, the Chinese character is written as a human plus two. In humanity and benevolence, we discover the germ of empathy, or Shu, that allows us to put ourselves in another shoe. As individuals, we are defined in relation to others. This empathy is reflected in Confucius' famous dictum, do not do unto others what you would not want others to do unto you. Empathy and compassion are the basis of understanding ourselves as a common humanity with a shared purpose. The second, or ye, is righteousness. This is the ability to act morally by strengthening our mind, will, and character so that we act appropriately in any given circumstance. This is ye, or righteousness, to do the right thing at the right time. Number three, li, is courtesy and propriety. Courtesy and propriety habituates a humble respect for others by being kind. Witness rituals such as weddings and funerals. Courteous behavior abounds. We even become reverential. Confucius wants to make everyday livingness a sacred rite of courtesy. Number four is chur, knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom opens up our minds to avoid egotism and dogmatism. Not to prejudge situations, but to think objectively and to reason and to reason practically. Sin or truthfulness and faithfulness. Sincerity, truth, and trust keep us real so that the bonds of mutual trust and loyalty become the basis of social and political harmony, even as we disagree and still compete. So to Confucius, these five virtues form the basis of a moral society. Social harmony, based on mutual trust and empathy, makes it easier for win-win compromises, as each interest group will be tempered by the five virtues. Conversely, advers this adversarial model in America of fighting over conflicting interests makes for enemies. Benevolent government legitimizes its rule by attending to the needs of all its people but it is sustained only by virtuous leaders who impart their sway by persuasion and by example. We become less reliant on penal laws. Litigation is lessened and punishment is a last resort. So what to do? 
a benevolent government in America would address three main areas of concern. Mighty business corporations. Corporations free to compete and innovate have accelerated technological and scientific progress. Today, there is a qualitative leap in our material living standards. But if corporations only focus on profits or li and neglect environmental and community impacts, then their behavior violates righteousness or yi. Corporations must not only act only for profits, li, but must also act such so that their actions, yi, embrace ren or humanity and benevolence. Corporate governance must include not just stakeholders, not just shareholders, but also stakeholders. Balance profits with social betterment. Guidelines for corporate governance must harmonize all with stakeholders, outside communities, charitable activities, climate change. Business is positive, but it also requires social responsibility. Number two, fallen communities. Too many disadvantaged communities, usually of color, have fallen into a state of hopelessness and neglect. They have become a haven for crime, violence, drugs, hunger, and hopelessness. A vicious cycle of discrimination stigmatizes these communities as irresponsible dregs of society, an underclass to be discarded. Such dehumanizing conditions perpetuate undesirable elements and entraps innocence into a cycle of crime. These conditions exacerbate racism. A benevolent government will not allow for the entrapment of its own people. Such institutional entrapment is like sentencing them to live the indignity of hopelessness. This violates ren, or humanity and benevolence, or pursuit of goodness. This also violates the American constitutional guarantee of the pursuit of happiness. Minchus would assert that the material well-being of all its people is the precondition for dignity. Let me repeat. The material well-being of all its people is the precondition for dignity. A benevolent government is obligated to restore the dignity of dis disadvantaged communities. A benevolent government must create guaranteed jobs with meaningful employment to replace hopelessness with opportunity, reallocate funds from the military to the people, empower the community and its leaders with tools to restore the ethic of responsibility and respect, Create, cultivate a moral education in the youth stressing positive character development to empower good over evil, support the family as a cohesive unit, and provide socialization of our concept of filiality, or xiao, honor and devotion between children and parents, siblings, husbands and wives, and friends. No matter how much a community has fallen, we all have the capacity to recover our innate goodness, and moral cultivation is the panacea for all social diseases. A benevolent government is a moral government. If you can go to the moon, you can provide hope and opportunity for all segments of the people. Now, how to fashion? How to fashion a benevolent government? Well, the people must elect virtuous representatives. The people must be able to see who and who, whoever who runs for, for any political office must be of high moral virtue. But beyond that, they must also have many more qualifications of merit. For example, a president of high moral caliber and imbued with sagely virtues can hasten the transformation to a benevolent government. A sage puts people first, the state second and the president last. The welfare and happiness of the people is inviolable and inalienable right. The sagely virtues of governing, the zhe, should be the standards by which the people elect their leaders. In our Confucian doctrine of the mean, it spells out the qualifications of a sage ruler. A profound ruler, or in our case, a profound president, must, must first be of the utmost sincerity, meaning in self-cultivation, 
He watches over his character and cherishes benevolence. He honors the worthy, practices propriety, and demonstrates humanity, knowledge, and courage. He is quick in apprehension, clear in discernment, of far-reaching intelligence, and all-embracing knowledge. He is fitted to exercise rule. Magnanimous, generous, benign, and calm, he is fitted to exercise forbearance. Impulsive, energetic, firm, and endearing, he is fitted to command reverence. Accomplished, distinctive, concentrative, and searching, he is fitted to exercise prudence. To the people he loves, he rules by moral sway and by example. He wins the hearts of the people. He wins their allegiance, not with force, but by virtue. My counsel for a new benevolent American government can be done. Benevolent democracy must be based on the people. The people are the eyes and ears of heaven. And heaven is the mandate that requires us to develop a political democracy that reflects the will of the people. So political leaders take heed. You are beholden to the people. Confucius believes within the four seas, all men are brothers. We have cultural sharing. So out there in the seas, there is, a, there is an enduring Chinese humanism just waiting to be tapped for our modern age. Thanks for listening, and if you believe this worthy, please share with your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, and even your politicians. Well, until next time, this is Kenny Jenner Chin. Uh, my next topic may be world peace. Have a great day, and be safe.